Uh, space time is just bits and gates, and you can ask, you know, who ordered that? Why should the universe be fundamentally that? Now, so the reason why I go there, even though I think most physicists don't, is that um, as a cognitive neuroscientist, I'm very interested in the problem was called the hard problem of consciousness. Right? We have lots of correlations between brain activity and conscious experiences. Like I, I like to use the example of area V4 of cortex, you know, left hemisphere is back over here somewhere. If you take a magnet and just touch it to your skull there, a, a transcranial magnetic stimulator, and inhibit V4, you will lose all color experiences in the right visual field. Everything to the right of where you're looking, you will lose color experiences. You turn off the magnet, color experiences come back. And we have dozens, maybe hundreds of correlations like that between specific kinds of neural activity and specific conscious experiences. But we have no scientific theories that can explain um, that correlation. There, there are none um, for any specific. We, there's not a scientific theory that can explain even one specific conscious experience, like the taste of chocolate or the smell of garlic, that says, for example, this pattern of brain activity or this functional aspect of brain activity um, must be the taste of chocolate. It couldn't be the, the smell of, um, you know, a rose. And these are the precise reasons why. There, there's just nothing on the table. And so I'm trying to solve two problems. I'm trying to say the reason why space-time is not fundamental is because something else is, consciousness. And if I start with consciousness, I can perhaps get a theory that explains this correlation between conscious experiences and brain states, but I don't start with something in space-time, namely brain states. I don't start with brain states and, and figure out how they cause consciousness. I go the other way around. I start with consciousness and show how it creates space-time as a data structure and brains and neurons as particular um, uh, objects within that data structure. So, so the idea, the big picture idea is, if space-time isn't fundamental, as the physicists are now recognizing, then objects that, look, that say, look, we can intervene. I can literally manipulate the brain and get a change in conscious experience. The fact that I can mm -hmm. intervene means I'm showing you the true causal structure of what's going on there. And that's a logical error. And it's very easy to see the logical error. Imagine you're playing a virtual reality game and you're, you're driving a, a car, you're driving a Mustang in a virtual reality game, right? And you have a steering wheel and it turns out you can, you can intervene in that. If I turn the steering wheel to the left, my car actually turns left in the game. If I turn the steering wheel to the right, the car turns right. Therefore, there must be a real steering wheel and it must have real causal powers. No, there's no real steering wheel. Correctly. Well, the, the thing about the steering wheel that you see in, in the virtual reality game is that if you turn your headset to the side, the steering wheel ceases to exist. There is no steering wheel because I'm not looking at it anymore. The steering, when I look back over to where the steering wheel should be, I see a steering wheel. The steering wheel is something that I create and destroy as I need. It's gone, now it's back. It has no causal powers. The steering wheel literally has no causal powers. It, it, it informs me as the player about actions that I can take to, to interact with the game. But the, but, and the way I see myself the way I visualize what I'm doing is I visualize myself turning the steering wheel, but that's all just a useful fiction. And the steering wheel itself literally has no causal powers. It's literally only in my head. There is no external steering wheel with, with causal powers. And I'm saying that that's true, not just in virtual reality, but in everyday life, because space time is not fundamental. It's just your headset. When you go around in everyday life, think virtual reality. I create the moon when I look up in the sky. I delete it when I look away. There is no moon just in the same way that there is no steering wheel in the virtual reality game. So when Einstein you know, asked uh, someone that was with him, um, do you really believe the moon is only there when you look and, and it's not there when, when no one looks? Um, my answer is, yeah, it does, it's not there when no one looks. There, there is no moon because there is no space time. It's, and see, that's the part that Einstein wouldn't like, right? Because his theory was the theory of space-time. Space-time is not fundamental. When we really understand what that means, nothing inside space-time is fundamental, nothing. And therefore, nothing inside space-time has genuine causal powers. It emerges from something deeper. It's a useful fiction that our species has to think that physical objects have causal powers. 
I throw a rock, it hits a window, the rock caused the window to break. That's a useful fiction. I inhibit area V4, color disappears. Aha, therefore V4 causes color. It's a useful fiction, but it's just a fiction, just like the steering wheel in the virtual reality game. Okay, let's remove the virtual reality.